is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. The Nimble with Numbers team presents Chalk Brought with Bo, with Bo Big Time McBrayer. I gotta know what a five dollar shake tastes like. That's hot. That's hot. I want winner, Bo. You don't know diddly. And his partner, Scott Stag Simpson. Do you know who I am? I'm trying to put Tiger Bomb on this jungle's nuts. That's cute. I remember when I had my first beer. I gotta catch a glimpse of these warlocks. Let's make a move. Let's make a move. Let's make a move. Hey, you guys, welcome back to Chalk Blocked, the world's sexiest DS show for now. This is coming to you hot from the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. That's Stax. I'm big time. We're talking. What are we talking about, Scott? I have no idea. Did we even yeah. write a show sheet? Is Who's there in a charge show of the show sheet? I thought you were in charge of the show sheet. No, I write everything. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. I'll be in charge of the show sheet. How about we talk about your Dallas Cowboys? They they've been stirring the pot lately. Yeah, your boy Jerry Tycoon Oil Tycoon Jones uh, has been making waves with some of his infatuations. He's infatuated with somebody. Uh, we we all are. Let's be honest. We we all want a little bit of the Kyle Pitts these days. But he seems to be a little bit more in love than the rest of us. What's going on with Jerry's world these days? Jerry's sending out smoke screens. He's a savvy bugger, man. But, I I mean, can you blame the guy? You got Kyle Pitts, 6'6", 250, runs like a gazelle, catches everything within 11 feet of him. Uh, what's not to love? If you're sitting at 10 like the Cowboys are, you have no chance of getting Pitts. So why not stir up the the dust, as they say, and uh, and cause a little smoke screen? Maybe, maybe it will uh, get some... We'll get somebody else that we actually want by forcing the other teams behind us to panic. Oh. Uh, look at the Eagles who traded out of that six pick to get to 12, and they, they are in the Pitts market. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. So is this there is a smoke screen, huh? Of course. Every, this is smoke screen season. <laughs> it, is it really is. Season. I mean – you have a couple of weeks till the draft. You get a lot of the a lot of the decisions that are being made now have already been made for months, and all the pro days that they're going to that just that's just like for us for dynasty. It's just confirmation bias. Like I don't think there's any way that the Niners are going to take Mac Jones. I don't think there's any way the Cowboys are going to have Kyle Pitts sitting there at ten. But it's fun to speculate. It is fun to speculate, and it's also fun if you are the Cowboys. Uh, it's fun to mess with the people who are around you because that does give you an edge. And, you know, Jerry Jones, he's the kind of guy that when you are at your worst, like like let's just say, for example, you had no electricity, like you had no running water, and you had nothing, uh, and then you got a little bit of electricity, he would charge you out the wazoo for that. You know what I mean? So, like, that's the kind of guy he is in real life in football. Oh man, I'm I'm kind of afraid that that's a that's like no man's land. He's got 31 other owners, and I don't think there's any owner in professional sports who's as powerful as Jerry Jones. Let me just be honest with you. Maybe Robert Kraft. Maybe those are the two. I mean, Robert Kraft yeah. has he still gotten in trouble for that you know, that uh, <clears throat> rub and tug, uh, whatever whatever it was? Did he ever face justice for that? So of I mean, maybe not. Robert, of course not, right? So maybe Robert Kraft is up there with him, Bobby Boy. But uh, Jerry Jones is slinging it down in in Big D with his Big D. Uh, you know, the Dallas Cowboys, his big stadium. Uh, that guy he's is. Got the, he's got a very thin, tight layer of skin on his forehead, and it's furrowed right now. When he thinks about Kyle Pitts, he's just like, oh, yeah, mm. let me get some of that. And if he's gone, which he probably will be, um, unless the Cowboys are stupid and trade up and give away assets for an offensive player they really don't need. But good Lord, if they get him on that offense and they completely kick defense down the road. Dak might throw for 80,000 yards. He'll have five, six weapons at his disposal to pass to. Um, the Cowboys will score 50 points a game and probably still go eight, eight and one with the new schedule. It's, <laughs> it's what a time to be alive. That's the last 25 years of my life as a Cowboys fan uh, since they won Super Bowl 30. Been like that where now you have everything on paper. And then when you show up, uh, something happens and they just don't win games. Well, you know what? I picked them last year to go 10 and 6 
to be the the NFC East leader and to get to the NFC Championship game. And man, boy, was I wrong. And how far off was I? I think Jerry, though, thinks the same way. Like you said, every year he's like, this is the year. This is the year. Um, this is what this is what Chris uh, this is what Mortensen had to say. All right. So we got Mortensen. It said uh, we're hearing this thing about Jerry Jones. So, so a thing we're hearing a thing. Uh, the owner of the Cowboys. Really? You needed to preface that with the owner of the Cowboys, Morton? Morton listen, Jerry. we all know who Jerry Jones is. You don't need to you know, give us a little the owner of the Cowboys. But okay, I appreciate that. Owner of the Cowboys and the GM, he adds. No, we, we've been paying attention there, Morty. Uh, being infatuated with Kyle Pitts, Morton said on ESPN. He's going to have to trade up to get Kyle Pitts. He spent $40 million a year on Dak Prescott. So why not go get Kyle Pitts? You know what? That's the logic that's kind of driving this uh, hot take cycle, you know, over at ESPN all of a sudden. I guess Mort went from respected, you know, bully work of a reporter to now wild speculator about why Jerry Jones is doing this. Uh, here's the thing. I'm not guaranteeing that he, like we said, that this is not just like a ruse, you know? So for him to say, yeah, he's already done this $40 million kind of splash. This guy's just going to do whatever he wants. I don't, I don't like the logic all the way because I think that if you just spent forty million dollars on Dak, you know maybe you want to spend a little bit of money. Uh, you have receivers. I mean, listen, you've got you got one of the best running backs in the game, top ten running back in the game. You've got CD Lamb in the slot. Good lord, right? You, you, your third receiver is Michael Gallup, who would be a second receiver on any other team. Yeah, sure, Kyle Pitts would make your offense unstoppable in a way, but your defense needs to be stoppable. They need to stop somebody, and you're not the Chiefs. You're not going to score as many points. Even with Kyle Pitts, I don't think you guys would rival the Chiefs. So, um, I, you know, it's a little bit of, you know, no, I love Mort, but it's a, it's a little bit of, 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 of push comes to shove. What do you think? I think they would absolutely outscore the Chiefs by five or six points a game if they had Kyle Pitts. The problem is the Chiefs defense is respectable. <laughs> that's a, that's the main difference is the Chiefs are going to average 30 points a game. But before Dak went down, the Cowboys had the top offense in the league. It didn't translate to wins. And that's what you're going for again. It's uh, And not to mention they have Zeke as a top 10 running back, but imagine what Tony Pollard would do with a little bit more volume. He's the number four ball carrier in the NFL two years in a row. He's only been a pro for two years. Two years in a row, number four in the entire league in broken tackle percentage. He's a stud. Give him the damn ball. Give the ball to my guy, Tony Pollard. I Zeke agree. is good, too. You have a two-headed thunder and lightning monster back there, plus three great receivers, plus possibly Pitts. And then Dak is a mobile quarterback. I don't think he's going to lose too much of a step coming off surgery. He looked great warming up with four or five months left in the till training camp. This offense could be absolutely one of the best ever. Like we're talking greatest show on turf status, but if their defense is giving up forty points a game, well, it's it's eight eight and one. Well, you know what? If it, if that's the case, I'm going to be having a lot of stock in the Dallas Cowboys this year in in DFS and uh, you know in in redraft, best ball, all those kinds of things. Uh, Scott Fish Bowl. If I get in, oh please, Scott Fish, let me in, please, please, please. Um, you know what? Whatever uh, tournament I may be in. Here's what I want to have happen. This is just me as a selfish Matt Ryan kind of, not a Stan, but out of all the quarterbacks who've not won, when he was about to win, I was most excited for him. Out of all the players, when I thought that they were going to win, I, I told Rose, like, looks like Matt Ryan's going to get a championship. Like, wow, 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 wow. Good for him. I love Matt Ryan. He's a competitor. He's a good guy. He's a classy guy. Uh, good, good for him. And then, yeah, history was 28 to three. Oh, 28 to three. And when my, my wife is a Patriots fan, by the way. And I was uh, more so an Atlanta Falcons fan that night than I was a Patriots fan for sure. And my wife was just so upset. She was like, stupid Tom Brady. I can't believe this is happening. Just getting upset. And this is the one game a year she watches. So, I mean, literally she doesn't ever watch any games, but now she's like, Oh, I can't believe Tom Brady. He sucks. You know? And then when they started coming back and when they got to overtime third and they quarter, won, yeah. yeah. When they well, got the third quarter, they cut it to like 10, 12. And then fourth quarter, they tied it. They sent it to overtime, but it was the two point conversion after the touchdown at the end of the game that tied it. Yep. And, and here's the thing. As soon as they won the coin toss, I threw my nachos up and I said, God damn it. God damn it. My wife's like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, Tom Brady's going to win another Super Bowl. And she's like, it's not. And then like seven plays later, it was, it was that. And James White was in just as easy as he had been for the two point conversion. And just as easy as he had been for the other touchdown. I, it, it was just, uh, it was too much. So anyway, this is where I'm going with this story. I'm not talking about the Patriots. Sorry to ruin this show. 
talking about the Pats. Boo. Boo, Pats. H- here's where I'm at right now. I am and really into the Atlanta Falcons, and I want them to get him at four. And I know, I know, I know. You don't think it's going to happen. They have have a chance. If they could get uh, Etienne or maybe, uh, you know, Harris, I don't know. Maybe they could as the second round pick. They could go and get their weapons to rival your Dallas Cowboys. And then you've got Ridley, Julio, Gage, Pitts, Mike Davis, and then uh, one of these young little backs, maybe Gainwell they could get. Him. Then then there's a chance that that you know that offense goes through the roof. So that, that's what I want because I like them better than I like the Cowboys. So as a fan of the NFL, you know, we're, we're at a crossroads here. Uh, what do you think is going to happen, though? This is what we think we want to happen, but what, what's probably going to happen? What do you think Pitts ends up? So this is my theory. The Falcons and the Cowboys are the same team. Yeah. They, they are teams that are desperately needing defense. They are teams with top 10 draft picks. And I think that the Falcons are either going to take Pitts at four or they're going to trade back to get more pieces. Mm. And the trading partner is going to be the Cowboys. Mm, that would be a and really good deal. We're going to tie this back together with guess who the Cowboys actually did. Their, their best free agent signing so far in this year, this offseason, has been former Falcons, often injured uh, free safety Keanu Neal. Mm. And yeah. he's often a stud, absolute year. stud when he's on the field. Pro Bowl yes. caliber, everything, all yeah. world. But he's had a really bad luck streak. Like every year he's been a pro, he's had not not like you can't call him injury prone because he's just had different severe injuries. Right. Um, it's it's not like he's just tweaking balls. hammies everywhere. No, he goes balls to the wall. That's why mm-hmm. he he is out there to seek and destroy and to put you down if you're in the in the in the uh, secondary. So no, I I would like that. I'd like to see something like that happen. There's not a lot of teams with offenses that can put Kyle Pitts in that tight end five already position like the Falcons and the Cowboys. So for fantasy purposes, those are the two teams I definitely want. I honestly want the Falcons a little more because I think he'd do a little bit better there um, because CD lamb, CD lamb. I mean, that's just, that's, you know, I want my bud, uh, my, my, not my bud, my bread buttered with CD lamb every day, right. all over front, back I- inside. Now I'm all about CD lamb this year. My team last year was CD's TDs. Uh, I'm going to have to run it back again and CD's TDs again with CD Lamb. Both offenses are well equipped, uh, but you're right. Pitts and Atlanta's offense gets a little bit more volume um, because there's fewer mouth feed. You have a 32 year old Julio who's uh, still the alpha on the field. Ridley is another basically one B alpha wide receiver. Um, incredible ability. Hayden Hurst is a great tight end, but he's not Kyle Pitts. And, they might even run 12 if they get a decent running back somewhere along the way. But Mike Davis as your starting running back right now. That's a woof right there. That's a big woof. Well, um, th- that team needs to run Gurley, the ball. It's, it's an upgrade over Gurley because Gurley was three steps in a fall down last year. He was terrible. Unless he was near the end zone. And then it was four yeah. steps in a fall down. So, you know, well, he couldn't right. fall down at one time. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, the best. Yeah. Yeah, Gurley's so good at finding the end zone. He can't. He can't even not do it when he's not supposed to. <laughs> no, he can't even not. That was so great. And the the video of him putting his head down, and then the other player <laughs> tapping him on the helmet. Just oh man, it was just he was, was sick. He, he wanted to throw, throw up. up. Yeah, he did. And you know what? He he effed my DFS lineups, and he ruined. Uh, I lost because I you know I lost money because that. So probably I lost money even though I had Gurley. I had Gurley, and that touchdown still screwed me because I had everybody else screwed me. I didn't have their defense, but I had Gurley, and I, he scored the touchdown. I was like, woo! And then it was just something else happened where uh, the game going on just screwed me up. So it was it was rough. Um, so, yeah, the Cowboys would love to have Pitts, but I think they need to stay put and go with a corner like J.C. Horn or uh, – Patrick Sertan the second at mm. uh, number 10 because mm. I, yeah. I don't think the defensive line prospects are top 10 worthy um, and they need that too but corner they had some stud corners at the top of that list there's three good ones that they can get at 10 and I'd be happy with that yeah I, I think a defensive uh, playmaker on that side of the ball would go a long way to help the Cowboys offense to be even more successful because uh, they would be able to balance the amount of time that they both spend on the field. Uh, and I think that is really important. So, uh, all right. 
So let's 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 transition. I have to I have to say something that's pretty cool. It's not it's not something we planned since you know it wasn't on the show sheet. But yesterday, uh, you know, I had the bright idea to try to build some community uh, within the fantasy football Twitter scape that we all are part of. Uh, my man Bo McBig Time and I love to kick it on Twitter. Please follow us over on Twitter, Bo underscore uh, McBig Time, and then Nimble W Number Scott Simpson. Uh, and then Bo, are you? What's your? What's above you? Mine says Scott Simpson on the top. What does yours say? Mine is uh, Bo knows and followed by like 15 emojis of what I know. All the things you know. Yeah. The yeah. extensive list of the stuff you know. I, I love that. Well, so I, I started this tweet where I just said, hey, if there's somebody in the fantasy football community that, that's a big name, if somebody that's, that's a big person that you would love to make your day if they followed you, uh, who would it be? I shared mine with Andy Holloway and I tweeted it out. And I, I hoped a couple people would just add on theirs here and there. It went crazy. It got uh, mm-hmm. over 150 replies. It got retweeted. It got liked. It got 200,000 impressions. And at the end of the day, Andy Holloway followed your boy and your other boy over here, Mr. Bowman Big Time. So I got to say thank you to Andy Holloway. We are huge fans uh, of the footballers. Uh, I remember when they first came out, I'm watching them on YouTube, and I'm like, man, I want to be this. I just want to quit my job and go be a fantasy football analyst. And I don't even know if they had quit their jobs at that point. I don't think they had. I think they were just, you know, doing it. I was so excited uh, to see them grow and, and to kind of become the Titans in the industry that they are. So thank you, Andy Holloway, all the fantasy footballers. We love you. All the fans who of the fantasy footballers. Yeah. You know, I think we're all fans of the fantasy footballers, honestly, uh, as, as guys who are in this space and who, who want to be able to just be genuine and be themselves and be fun. I love their spirit and how much they love uh, fancy football. I mean, that's just, that's what we're here for. We love it so much. And, and shout out to those guys. We will, we will do you proud. I did warn him. I said, Andy in the DMS, I said, I retweet everybody's stuff. I'm, I'm into everybody and I want to make sure everybody gets heard. So uh, if you, if you want to turn off the retweets, just be, just, just know. And he said, no, it's all good, buddy. So I'm, I'm really excited. Andy is now going to get to, from just from me tweeting out everybody's stuff, he's going to get to see more of the fantasy football landscape and to see all the friends that we get to work with because they'll be in his feed. So uh, I hope he gets to to follow more of the people that we like and that we follow and that we're a part of. And uh, shout out to all it's, the footballers. It's definitely going to happen now. And uh, and, and just to, my reply, my quote tweet on your on your post was, of course, my uh, my writing and. Uh, fantasy football idol matthew barry the tmr himself mm. um still waiting for that follow matthew we'll get him uh, yeah i mean i've been reading your stuff since 04 since he started with espn.com uh writing fantasy football i mean it was that, that i've been i've been reading your stuff ever since i've had an espn.go.com profile since 2000 for, uh, and like, I still don't even have to log in with my email address because when I had that login, it was before you needed one. Um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's a, uh, I mean, I don't care what, who follows me really other than Matthew Barry. Once he follows me, I think I'm going to unfollow. I'm going to unfollow a bunch of people <laughs> just because I got, that's all I need. <laughs> that's all you need. Well, shout it's, out Matthew Barry. It's weird. It, I sound, yeah, it sounds really desperate, but I mean, what are you going to do? Well, you know what? I'm not. No, here's the thing about this. I think as a, as a person that we have the freedom to love people who we don't know and admire people who we don't know and to watch. I mean, I love so many different people that I don't know. Artists, you know. I mean, if, if I could sit down with with Pink Floyd or uh, you know, uh, the Killers or just, I would love that. Like, I love those people. I've enjoyed their art. I appreciate what they do and I love them, you know? And so I don't think it's weird at all. Uh, I think if you love somebody, eventually they're going to get to hopefully share that love and know that love. And I believe in love. So Bo, I hope your story of love and never gives up on Matthew Barry. And then one day he follows you. And then it's just the happiest day of your life. And, uh, you tell me, you say, Matthew Barry, follow me. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that. That I'm little waiting for it too. I'm waiting for it too. And it's uh, in my drafts, by the way. That that, that. <laughs> <laughs> you just change the year. Each year you go in, you're like, I've been a fan here for a race race. Twelve years. Oh, the race race. Well, it's years. I've had I've had some iteration of a pinned tweet since I started Twitter. It's like, Matthew Berry, <laughs> follow me. <laughs> I want you to leave snarky comments on my pecan takes. And uh and for me, it's in the drafts. I just have to decide which GIF I'm going to use because that's what I'm known for more on Twitter. It's just like, okay, just snap GIFs, throwing yeah. off crazy GIFs that nobody's like, where did you find this? So like, me, I'm just searching stuff all wacky and I'm, and I'm quick with it. I'm quick with it. I'm, so yeah, it's in my drafts. Um, 
But hello, hello, hello. Is there anybody in there? Oh, man. That's a great word reference right there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Smile if you can hear me. Is there anyone home? Yeah. So anyway, we, that's copyright infringement, by the way. So we'll stop right at that. No, not if we don't have their music on here. Oh, if we, okay, if we sing our cappella, it's totally cool. Oh, okay. Well, then we're going to have to do one of those. We'll have to sing Wish You Were Here one of these days from start to finish. You know, um, we'll have a harmonica and we'll do yeah. that. And then we'll do that. That's how we'll end a show once. But uh, we'll, we'll do a whole segment of Stairway to Heaven, which is not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not being played with. We'll, we'll call it, we'll call it Ladder to Heaven. So it's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this big segment called Ladder to Heaven. Can't wait yeah. to jump in and listen to it. Uh, yeah. No, but but anyway, here's the cool thing about uh, th- this experience. So many people reached out to me in DMs and just online and said, hey, the person that I reached out to followed me because of this mm-hmm. thread. Like at least 15, 20 people personally said that to me. And so I'm excited that something I did was able to help other people because honestly, that's the exact goal that I wanted it to do. I, I love so many people and I want so many people to be able to be happy and to find their happiness with their fantasy football crush on Twitter. So um, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do it again. And uh, I got a few friends. I'm coming after Jason next. And then after that, I'm going to come after Mike Wright. So watch out, ballers. I'm not done. I'm coming for each of you guys. I'll wait. Like, I'll do it like uh, every two months I'll do it just so it's not too annoying. Uh, but I, I'm into pumping other people up. That is one of uh, Scott's goals. I've been blessed by so many people in this industry. And until, uh, you know, I am Matthew Berry, I am, just, or even after that, I'm just going to give away, give away everything I have to help everybody else. That's that's the goal. Uh, and speaking of giving away, uh, Bo, last year, I gave away so much money to you. Uh, what are you doing <laughs> all that money I gave you? What are you spending on? Sunglasses, hats, paraphernalia? What are you doing? Bourbon. <laughs> What, yes. what, what, what's a good bourbon that you can that you like uh, that you bought with with the money I lost to you? So I actually went out because you were so gracious to lose to me so many times. Um, I went out and I spent more money on a bottle, a single bottle of whiskey that I've ever spent. And it was one hundred and forty five ninety nine mm. for a, what's retail or like your asking price usually on this bottle is about three hundred, and it's a it's a old, very old Saint Nick uh, summertime rye. Uh, it's pretty, it's just, it's, it's expensive because it's hard to find. They don't release a lot of bottles. And so I found one and I found it for a good price and I sprung for it because I just got a nice little PayPal from Nimble <laughs> for another dominating week of DFS. And, uh, and that was, that was exciting because it, that's, that, that's some good juice, baby. That, that very old St. Nick uh, rye is insanely good. Is it still around or did you polish it off? No, it's still around. That's for special occasions. So when I come out there, you have it. So here's what I found out, right? And this is good news. I found out. I, I read a little stuff on the the NIH CDC uh, government website today that said that if you're vaccinated uh, and you're you're flying a uh, commercial, you know, on a plane, uh, one in twenty seven million people are going to contact COVID that way, um, yeah, or carry it. Or so what that means to me is that this summer. Uh, right when, right when it's the hottest, when California's on fire, right when I'm going to come out, I'm going to come out and, uh, we're going to hang out vaccinated and I'm going to break all my fasts that I've been doing that I'm, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so for those who don't know, and if you can't tell, I'm felt sexy and sober and I have been sober this year and I am, I had like one drink of, of, um, whiskey when I went on vacation, like a little, I bought a mini drink, a mini, you know, at one night, um, cheers, my friend that. Where are you? <laughs> you're hiding. Um, I'm hiding behind my sprite. <laughs> yeah, you're hiding because you're not as sexy as as your co-host. That's what's happening over here. No, but oh, um, since when? Who's who's my new co-host? <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Uh, so here's the thing. I, I'm down 20 pounds, which I'm really excited about. Not because, Woo. but I need to be. I need to be. Uh, I've been a fat bastard for a long time, and uh, all I did last year was drink and grow my beard out. And just, I, I deleted so many videos. My, my iCloud is full. Everything's full on my phone. I have no storage left. I've, I've uh, the biggest gigs you can get and it's full on my iPhone 11. So I started watching all of these videos or kind of deleting them. Man, I was a drunk last fall. Every video was like, this is my next favorite beer. This is, I was like, these are all in the same day. You know, as I watched, I had the same shirt on. I was like, man, Rose, I was just a drunk fool in the fall and she's like you normally are in the fall you kind of go balls to the walls football season it's just you just have fun you just have fun i said you know what great 
But now that I'm down 20 pounds, my goal is to be down 30 more pounds by football season or 25. I want to, my, the lightest I've ever been as an adult was 205, 230 right now. And that was, you know, when I was just so sexy. If I can get down to 205, uh, that's what I want to be when I come see you or, you know, maybe before then, whatever. But I'm go- definitely going to break my drinking fast when I see you for sure. And I'm going to yeah. eat the best food in the world. We're going to do yes. a menu before I come. We're going to meal plan together. We're going to lay out like. That's actually, uh, that's pizza. part of the rules. Yeah, like both pizza, the taco. I'm going to come on like a Sunday so I can do like a Sunday, Monday, taco Tuesday. Went, you know, have have like a, a little uh, a tour de force of the Bo McBig time uh, cooking extravaganza. He, he His food, if you don't follow him on, on Instagram, uh, you should. Um, what's the Instagram handle in case they want to follow you, Bo? Uh, it's like big time flavor underscore. Big time. You should follow it, man. It, the yeah. food he puts out there is almost as sexy as he is. And uh, it makes you understand why he's so sexy. So, um, but I digress. Uh, we, we have, we're, we're up against a commercial in about a minute. So we're going to jump to commercial. We got five minutes, then we're going to come back. Uh, but what, what do you want to talk about when we come back? Cause you know, I mean, the show sheet, I, don't, I can't find it. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little bit of leeway here. What's on your mind when we come back? What do you want to talk about? So uh, we had a little bit of, too much fun on Twitter with uh, controversial food takes. So we're going to keep the food train going, but we're going to talk about controversial opinions about food that we have. Mm, I love that. That That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to anger people on the internet yes. when we come back. Mm. Oh, I love that. Uh, please send all of your comments to uh, at Bo underscore Mick big time over on Twitter. Follow him. Follow Matthew Barry. Follow the fancy footballers. Follow Howard Bender. Follow Denny Carter. All those people. Follow him. Follow him. Follow him. Shout out Howard Bender. Yeah. Shout out Howard Bender. We're going to be right back in about five minutos. Thanks for sticking with us here on Chalk Blocked. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Actually, we'll be interviewing as a team. We're here to f- shit up. Oh, now back to Chalk Blocked with Bo and Scott. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to Chalk Blocked. I am Scott Simpson, Nimble W Numbers on Twitter. I am with my co host, my partner, my DFS daddy, as he's going to be known for this year, Bo underscore my big time, the best DFS player I've ever gone head to head against. Uh, and, and you're talking to the guy who took Pete Overzet's money three weeks in a row last year. He sent DMs out, he sent things out. He said, I want the smoke. I brought the smoke three weeks in a row. I reached back out to him, and Pete said, no, no. Bo said yes every single time. And I got to say, um, I shouldn't have beat him the first couple times. That that put my ego up there to make me think I could beat him other times. And uh, I did not. I did not beat him. Other times. <laughs> and that was discouraging. I think I beat him once. So it went like this. I beat him on Thanksgiving. I beat him like you beat the turkey dry and nasty just beat it up just nasty i hate turkey my first controversial thing i, I like the breast or the dark meat Whoa. mixed in mixed Whoa. in great well, i like breasts i'm a breast guy you know mixed in gravy just tons of gravy but it's still dry I, it's not my favorite i'd rather have ham that's just my but, but but anyway i beat him on thanksgiving and then i don't, didn't beat him again until after the new year i didn't beat him again until week one of the playoffs uh so that was terrible because that was like eight weeks in a row of losing 50 to a hundred dollars after I would pay him 35 bucks for all the work he did. So, you know what? It, it was, it was not the best of times. Just, you know, to be honest with you. So I'm glad that you got to get some, some drinks out of it. Um, wh- what about you? What, what are some of your controversial food takes that you want to jump in here with? So it was more general, but I tweeted out that uh, my, I felt like when I look back at my childhood, like my grandma, really amazing cook. My dad, amazing cook. My mom cooked a lot, but there's only a few things I actually loved that she cooked. And her mom hmm. is my grandma, and she, everything she cooks is so phenomenal. And my grandpa, my dad's dad, is and was an actual chef. And so Ooh. it was. I had good food. I had good food from everywhere I looked, and as soon as I could see over the countertop. I was cooking. I was making stuff. My grandpa was teaching me how to fry stuff. He was teaching me how to, how to pressure cook and do all the, all the fancy stuff. 
And my grandma would teach me how to cook without uh, without certain ingredients because she was like, hey, you're not always going to have this. So eat instead of that, use this. And so and and I went like through all my teenage years where I lost interest. I didn't really care. And I went through college, didn't really cook anything, didn't need to. I got into a relationship after college that ended up being my marriage. And I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I can cook, but I just don't. And so I started going to the kitchen and trying stuff out. But what it made me realize is that most moms aren't as good of a cook as we remember. Like, oh, oh, all the nostalgic meals and you look and you look or you go back for dinner, a Sunday night dinner as an adult. And you're like, really, this is, oh, yeah, I've always made it the same way. Like, I'll be in the kitchen with my mom and she's making it the same way and she's not seasoning anything. I'm yeah. like, mom, why aren't you going to add salt and pepper to this or vinegar or something? And she goes, why? I was like, because there's no flavor. <laughs> and she goes, and I was like, I don't know how to tell you without breaking your heart, but this is, has no flavor. She goes, well, you always loved it. <laughs> how dare you, bro? How but dare I you? had to tell her, I was like, this needs something else. And she goes, okay, try it your way. And she goes, okay, we're, we're just having you cook from now on. So now every time we do Sunday night dinner, my mom's like, I'm just delegating the cooking to you. If it's barbecue or whatever, she just wants me over earlier so I can cook and, and for everybody. And nobody has any problem with that because now that I've had um, a lot of years of playing around the kitchen for fun and making hot sauce and seasoning blends, um, I feel like my family um, is finally catching on to the fact that I'm now the best cook in the family because the people that are, were better than me have passed on. Mm. And so, or my grandma, Barbara is still alive. My mom's mom, she's still alive and lives on property. And she's just, she'll bake a pie every once in a while, which still blows your mind, but she doesn't cook anymore. She just shows up for dinner. (laughs) She's very happy to do that. You you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say that your controversial food take did not hit me like the broadside that it might have hit others because I I concur, man. I, I, that's a hot take. I can, I can high five, you know, like the, we can all jump up together like an anchor man, you know, like (laughs) as a team, uh, my mom's cooking was for six kids and I'll give you a little back backdrop of that. She didn't like to eat. So she would not eat the food she made, which if you don't eat the food you make, then you don't know what it tastes like. And then you just make crappy food. And so my mom's one of, one of the, the things that I tweeted out that, that she made that was the grossest thing ever was canned pineapples from Giant. Uh, it, it, Giant food is a food distributor here in the East Coast uh, in the goo, in the goo, right? That, that's it's sitting on the shelf for I don't know how long it was, right? She would get that pineapple. She would make rice, just regular rice. She would just cook meatballs. <laughs> Meatballs that had no seasoning. There was no, like, it was just meat, like just, just meat. And it was like ground chunk, like uh, your, the pork, the poor people ate. They're like, this is the pork chunk at the end. They're like, this has been here for like six months. Try it. You know, it might not, it, I mean, it might, might not be pork. I don't know. I don't know. So, so she would get that kind of ground beef and then she would make meatballs with nothing in them, no seasoning, no flavor, no nothing, cook them up. And then she would take the rice. And the meatballs and the pineapples, and then put it together, and then go here, have this. And I, every time she did it, like once a month, I would go, no, no, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not eating any of that. That's the grossest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I would have a fight with my family, and I would ruin dinner every single time <laughs> she made it. And she didn't get the message. I don't understand why she didn't get the message. If your oldest son and leader of the of the wolf pack tells you that your meatball pineapple rice tastes like garbage. You should have listened. Uh, what I did teach my mom. No, I'm sorry. She taught me. She taught me how to make pizza. My Kathy Simpson, God bless her soul. She's a great woman. She can make the best pizza around her dough rise is just perfect. She's got pepperonis, sausage, green peppers, red peppers. She's got everything that you need to make a beautiful pie. She makes white pizzas. She makes extra sauce pizzas. She just runs the gamut. And when the Simpson family gets together, there's six siblings, uh, five of us, four of us are married. I think there's 16 grandkids. She'll make 15 pizzas. She'll make to order pizzas for that. She'll be like, oh, oh, Scott, my dad, he got your favorite special pizza. That's Scott's pizza. Don't eat all that. That's it. That's Scott's. You know, my sister Christine, she doesn't like sauce. That's her white pizza. Yeah, we know, mom. No one likes that. It's gross. You know, so <laughs> something wrong with her. Right. She's weird. <laughs> she didn't like spaghetti from the break. Remember? She didn't eat red sauce. We don't like her. 
you know? So anyway, <laughs> shout out my sister and my mom. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm with you on those food takes, uh, by the way. I think you're exactly right. And what you've done, though, sir, is that you have eclipsed not only m- moms and, and now grandmas, dude. Like, so I can't wait to eat at your table, brother. Honestly, it's going to be probably like uh, somebody eating at Bobby Flay's table or somebody eating, you know, at one of these uh, Gordon Ramsay's table. Just when I leave, I'm going to tell everybody about it. I'm going to take a million pictures. I'm going to record some video. Like we should do a show. Uh, we're going to, yeah, we're we going to shoot like a show. A, we should shoot like a hot, uh, a hot box episode of the foodies out there and just do what Sean Evans does and just eat the food and just, just interview each other and just talk about fun stuff and talk about how we're going to win the DFS uh, millionaire sweepstakes this year. So, you know, that's just something I'm thinking about myself. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to say, but um, we're going to smash Kathy Simpson's pizza and blow it out of the water. It's going to ruin it for you. I'm really sorry. Um, I ruined a few things for my wife um, just by playing around with it. And she gets mad, though, because I'll nail it the first or second time, and then I'll try to make it better, and it changes, and she doesn't like change. Mm. So if I nail it, and then I keep trying to make it better from nailed it, my wife gets mad at me. She's like, why are you changing it? It was perfect. Dude, what are you, what are you doing? And I'll be like, but it's better. She goes, no, it's different. Mm. The wife. <laughs> better. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'll go back to making it the boring way. She's like, no, it was perfect. <laughs> Don't change it. Don't do it. What? And I'm like, <laughs> Throw throw in a little bit extra while she's not looking. <laughs> you know what? Listen, if you met if you're making the meal, I'm saying thank you, please and thank you. That's it. Those are the words I'm saying. I'm saying oh my god, oh my god. But you know what? I'm not married to Bo, and let me just say, I don't see too much into Bo's relationship with his wife. But let me, I think and this is what I'm in my summation of you and me and our roles and and myself, your wife, my wife, my wife and you are very similar. Uh, you're, you're quieter, you're smart, you're very thoughtful, you're very deep individuals. And then me and your wife are kind of, um, more out and about just, just, just very, like I say, the way I describe myself in a simplistic term is if there's a volume knob in the middle is five, I'm a seven. And if I get really wild, I'm an eight. And then when you look at my, my anagram, I am an eight. So, uh, <laughs> if you didn't know, boy is a solid eight. Boom, 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 boom. In your face, yeah. have a take. I made that up. And my wife's my wife. wife's knob is broken and it's stuck on eleven. <laughs> I love I, I love your wife. Like I, I I don't think we could spend a lot of time together because I think it, it would be loud. She'd be like that guy is awesome, and we're just gonna yell it and be excited. And and you and my wife would be like. Okay. Yeah, well, we'd have noise allowed. complaints in my neighborhood. Is They're not happen. allowed to hang out ever again. And then we'd be like, <laughs> no, come on. Because the times she's gotten on are – so here's how the after show works with me and Bo. When when we're done in about – what is it, like 10 minutes or something? Oh, man, it's terrible. 10 minutes or so, we're going to be done. We'll still talk. We'll get on here. We'll talk for you know a while. And, and normally when his wife is home, she jumps in, and I get to talk with, with her. And the, the she is the funniest person She's uh, hilarious. She, I mean, seriously, she is. You think I'm funny? Pfft, I'm not funny at all. You think uh, Chris Farley's you're, funny? <laughs> you're, you're funny looking. I know that. <laughs> I am smelly looking. I'm smelly looking. And don't you forget it. Uh, no, but your wife, man, she has made me like die. Like literally yeah. you know, to, the point, to the point where she made me, you and Mike die when she killed Chase. She just, yeah, yeah I just killed him. And I just said, yeah. you know what? Uh, this woman, I love her. I love her. I love her so much. And then. I tried to follow her and her friend. I didn't follow. I guess I couldn't find your wife. Or I didn't know where you know her handle was because she wasn't tagging anything. And she goes to me, I'm not letting you follow me because you didn't follow me first. And I was like, she, oh. Yeah, I'm she like, said, no. Nah. <laughs> no, I'm not letting you follow. And so, you know, that's a good that's a good woman right there. So shout out your wife. She's an amazing. Christina, thank you. Yeah, you're, you're the best ever. So, so yeah, um, what do you think about those Lofthouse uh, Easter cookies, the the sugar cookies that come in the pack with the big, like, thick layer of frosting and the the, the seasonal sprinkles? What do you think of those? Okay, so I'm smash your pass. Man, I mean, honestly, there's two different Scots. There's the devil and the angel, right? And the, and the <laughs> devil, the devil's like, eat six, just eat six, eat do six it. of them. Take them, make them a sandwich. Do it like this, right? This is how you do it. You put one on the bottom and face up. And then you put one face down on top of it, right? And then you put the uh, the next one on top of it, but not face up. It's it, or face down. It's face up, right? So you, so it's like a sandwich, and then there's nothing in between. So there's like skin on skin, you know, not not frosting. So, it's so a it's middle like, button. 
Yes, it's it's a middle bond. And then you put one on the bottom face up, and then you put another one. So it's like a four layer. Uh, and then you go, and then you eat it real quick in the break room so no one can see you. And then and then later you might throw up some of it. But that's how you do it, and I love it. <laughs> but, but, but then the angel says, you know, Scott, you're better than that. You're better than that. That cost no, like seven not. cents to make. Seven he's not better. Days. He's not better than it's not. Better than it's that. all <laughs> glucose. It's literally oh, yes. one thousand percent glucose. Don't do it. And then and then Scott's devil goes. No one's gonna have to know. <laughs> 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 so that's how it really works. If you want to be honest, you know. So I have I have a love I I I'm all devil when it comes to him, but I have a love hate relationship with him because I know I've had homemade sugar cookies and they're a million times better. These right. cookies, there's nothing special about them. Oh, they're but terrible. For, for a couple of days a year, you're gonna grab one and you're gonna have a gallon of milk nearby because it's needed. It's absolutely mm-hmm. required because they are like uh they it's like sugar. It's just powdered sugar and food coloring. And you're just putting it in your mouth and it's delicious because it's sweet and everybody loves sweet. Your your synapses are going, whoo, we like this sweet. And have three more. Have the whole box. It's only three dollars for a box. Right. And so that's that's what it is. And and so they're not good. They're not great. They're, nobody nobody says they taste amazing, but you gotta have them. Yeah. You gotta have a box an Easter and Valentine's Day when they when they come out. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I'm going to invite you to a special tradition in the Simpson family. It's the day after Thanksgiving. So it's going to be a tricky one. It's Or we could push it to Saturday or Sunday. But it's Christmas tree day here at the Simpson family. And what we do is we we get together as a family. And last year, we just did it as, as ourselves because of COVID. But before that, we would get together with the Wizgas, which is Rose's maiden name. And uh, Steve and Yvonne, my in-laws, and we would kind of all drive out and, and separate cars. But Steve, uh, he's got the the, the big track on top of the SUV so he can put the Christmas trees and tie them down. We go get our Christmas tree, chop it down for the last, since I, so before we went to the UK, I lived in the UK from 2009 to 2010. So one year I chopped down my Christmas trees from 2005 or so until 2009. And then when I came back, I've chopped. So every single Christmas tree I've ever had in my house, I've cut it down myself or well, my wife has helped to cut it down. Most of the time I do it myself. Uh, and so uh, we, we normally do that. And then when we come back, Bo, we have homemade sugar cookies with homemade icing with, with the, the works. And my wife just does it out. Whoa, whoa, and it whoa, is, whoa, it's become a tradition whoa. in our family. And everybody loves it. Everybody makes their own special sugar cookie. They get all into the sugar cookie. And then you, I mean, you would love this. They're, they're moist. They're not like, they're not mm-hmm. fake and, and spongy. You know, they're, they're soft, creamy, buttery, but then also they fall apart and melt in your mouth when you eat them. And then the, yes. the icing is perfect. So at least at the very least, I'm going to have to send you, I'll make some for you during this year. If you can't come out and then I will mail them to you, you know, like zip locked and sealed. So they're not messed up. Heat them in the microwave for about 10, Ugh. 15 seconds, dude. And then you can eat them on the show and we'll just, we'll geek out about them. And, uh, and then you won't worry about those other cookies anymore. You know? So that's my take. Well, I will, but I'll, I'll definitely have them. Well, tell anybody. So <laughs> well, let's, let's, how about we, we, we do the big finish. Oh yeah. The big brought finish. to you, brought to everyone here watching and listening, brought to you by big time flavor code.com. Home of the world's most deliciously intense condiment, box gourmet hot sauce. It's also home to Smoke Shack barbecue rub, so good you can eat it with a spoon. It's taco season, which is a taco seasoning blend that you can add to or any kind of taco meat or vegetable if you're vegetarian. Uh, it's it's just good on everything. It smells good. You can snort it. It won't hurt you. Um, and a new product that you probably should not snort because it's really spicy um, is coming out soon. It's going to be called that's clucking hot and it's a Nashville hot chicken seasoning. And so it's a lot hot and a little sweet. You know what? I, I, I'd be remiss if we were just talking instead of gawking. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Rest in peace gawker. Uh, and then also honestly, rest in peace DMX. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, I I love him by the way. Um, he, he's a, the real deal. That guy will, would rob you steal from you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That was his thing. Uh, that's not what I wanted to share. Uh, my, my producing skills, they're still in development. I'm not going to lie. They're they are in the beta phase, as we say. Uh, maybe it's because I don't have the thing up. Uh, you know what? Scott, you big idiot. You got to actually put it up to be able to share it. Yeah. I like 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 Bo has, has uh, beaten me before. I'm getting beat again. Here is bigtimeflavorco.com. 
go yeah. there. This is the symbol. It's the fire eyes with the, the tongue. And here's, here's what the tongue represents. And Bo didn't tell me this. I know this. It's, it's that when you eat these things, you are salivating to the point where you have to have more. That, that's how my hot box experience has been. Uh, one bite, I eat it. I chew it up. And then the heat from the sauce brings out your 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 salivating you you want more you have to have it and when your last bite is gone here's what i've done after i've had some egg sausage i'll take some chips <laughs> i'll just sprinkle it <laughs> on and then bo's like what are you doing i'm like i'm addicted and i just can't get enough so he's um, chasing the dragon <laughs> and you know what and it's it's delicious you know check out uh all the stuff you can get over there here's the hot box uh, I would say this, but one one suggestion I'd say put a picture of your bottle because it's so pretty. You know, uh, it's so pretty on here. The Smoke Shack rub, the Taco Sizen, and then you can go get some hot merch over here at Ver- Viridian Global. We're big fans of Viridian Global. You got Bo over there. We're rocking the hats right now. If you if you want to go get one of these bad boys, uh, my man Justin uh, Vanek is about to get one of these in the mail. Uh, the, these are just they're hot. You mean Jordan? Jordan? Jordan I call him Justin. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> You know who Justin Bannock is? Do you know who he is? His brother. No. <laughs> he is an NHL player from the 1990s. And huh. my brain, that was the first person in my brain from back in the 90s. So what you just saw was my uh, the way that, that learning works. You, you associate, and my brain went back to that first. So, yeah, Jordan. I'm so sorry, my man. I love Jordan, by the way. Uh, if you don't follow Jordan Bannock, it's Jordan Bannock1 on Twitter. Mm-hmm. He is a genius like literally a genius i love yes. him uh and he, he got he's getting one of these in the mail i'll be there i think next week so shout out mr jordan vanek a thousand apologies for for labeling you justin uh but what, <laughs> else, what else do we have to, to pump here i mean look at all these look at all these sexy things uh, you have here this- threads what i love the most about viridian global is the quality of the threads like the hats are just premium top top notch quality. The yeah. shirts are top notch. Everything is just like you wear it and it's instantly comfortable. It's pre washed. It's pre softened, and I mean the prices are reasonable. I've I've over a hundred dollars for a hoodie, and I was going on the website thinking that was going to be about eighty to a hundred dollars for a hoodie for something that high quality, and for fifty nine bucks for a, a hoodie that's plenty heavy. It's still weight when it comes to like breathability, and like, come on, look at it. Right. Like anybody could walk down the street and be like, damn, even well, Scott could walk down the street and get in turn heads with that. I definitely could. Let, let me just say this. What I love about this is that I told my wife I wanted it for Christmas. She didn't get it for me. Uh, and then for my, for my birthday, let me tell you this on my birthday, my wife said happy birthday to me. All of Twitter said happy birthday to me. My children did not say happy birthday to me until right before bed when I just said, Hey, I love you. My birthday is today. And they went, Oh, happy birthday. I forgot to get you a card this year, which I always do. So I didn't get, I didn't get Jack, you know, yeah, Taki mushrooms for, for my birthday. But that's okay. That's okay. I didn't either, man. I, I'm gonna, I didn't either. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to buy myself. I'm going to leave this page up when we're off in about, you know, 40 seconds. I'm going to buy myself one of these that you've already talked about how comfortable it is. It's got the dual lining. Like, so you have the inside and the outside that, that is a, a, a dual protection from heat, cold, being able to be breathable, like you said, I, I can't wait to rock it. And, and also, uh, I did buy a Pete Overzet Deposit King sweater, and a sweater like this too. It, it, it's not going to be as nice as yours. I can tell you that right now. It's going to be nice, but yours is going to be the best. And I can't wait to get it. I'm going to order it. And then also, shout out uh, the, 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 the FF astronaut. I got to tell you, I look dead sexy in this, boys. You know, if you want to bring me on just as a sex consultant, I'm your guy. You know, so. I remember your Christmas time modeling gig that you had with that. It, it was hot. So, well, we, we would love to talk forever, but we have got to go from for Bo McBig Time for Scott Simpson. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate everybody who listened to this. You're awesome. We love you. Chalk Block will be back next week. But do we have somebody coming on next week? I think we got a little something, something. What do we got next week? We do. Yeah, we got uh, Chris Robin, Detroit Beastie coming on. Mm, uh, so yeah. stay tuned next week, Chuck Block. We're actually going to talk some DFS. We will. And <laughs> we, 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 uh, we mess with these guys. He's from the Undroppables. We, we love those guys. Andrew, all those guys. They're our favorite. Uh, Paulie, you know, th- there's just a bunch of guys over there. Well, they're my favorite. I love I love yep. the Undroppables. I've, I've been with them, like, side by side, not without, without being involved as an Undroppables member. I've been side by side since they formed, which I, I love. love I mean, I... I'm I'm in lockstep with those guys. 
I love it. Well, on that step, we're going to jump out. We'll see you guys next week over here on Chalk Block. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.